this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T. Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And it's been a very exciting morning here. The phone fell off of the stand. The stand got all upside down and inside out. The dog got tangled in the cord to the uh, remote mic. It's just a freaking nightmare. So we're late. Things are going crazy. We're going to have to move back to a stable table to do this because it's scaring my corgi and he's shaking. Poor little guy. So happy new year, everybody. Happy 2018. Um, we probably should have started later today because for a lot of people, this is a day off. And in fact, we're so late, we're just kind of between the 8.30 and the 9.30 time, which is probably working for you guys too. And Danny, oh my God, it's like negative 25 where you live. I can't even believe that that's the air temperature somewhere in the continental U.S. Oh, it is below zero here. Of course, I haven't really left the house much. I went out yesterday to go to the store. But other than that, I've stayed indoors. And it's a little chilly in the house by the windows, but mostly I'm not really interacting with the weather and Tristan's been trotting out quickly and trotting back in. So today I wanted to talk about New Year's resolutions for our pets and our relationships with our pets. And the first thing, the most important thing we all need to do for our pets is to become more aware of their health needs and the impact of what we do on their health. And this really Um, gets right down to the idea of what we feed them. They are what we feed them. You are what you eat. And I know that in some areas it's still controversial about feeding raw food and it's hard for people to do home cooked food and it might be expensive to feed dehydrated raw if you have a big dog. But the bottom line is you can't afford not to. If you love your pet and you want him to live as long as possible and share his life with you for as long as possible, then you have to feed your dog as well as you possibly can. And my sister's been talking about this for years and I've been sort of quieter about it because um, I wasn't willing yet to take the heat from people arguing that their expensive kibble is fine for their dog. But what I mean when I say you need to feed your dog as well as you can, that means no kibble, no kibble of any kind. All food that's dry food has been cooked several times at very high temperatures. Um, And as my sister points out in a video I posted yesterday, that stuff will last for 25 years. That has sugar and salt and other chemical preservatives in it that are not good for your dog, nor you. You don't want food that's gonna last 25 years. Um, Just from vibrational medicine that I do, I know that a fresh picked organic lettuce leaf is at about 18 to 20 hertz in its vibrations. Whereas one that sat around the fridge goes down to three or five, microwave food is below zero. And so you can't feed your dog something that's been dead and, and stored away in a bag for 25 years. And I have a lot of clients that really argue with me about this because a vet may have told them that feeding this expensive kibble, you know, some of these kibbles are $50, $60 for a smallish bag, um, is what they need to do. And kibble is still dehydrating your dog. It is taking water out of their system and it is gradually making their kidneys and liver and their digestive function impaired. And I, of course, like everyone, fed kibble to my dog for years. Thank God I knew someone in the 90s who had a very sick dog and I learned how to feed better kibble and better food. And, you know, I've always fed canned food with the kibble. Thank God. I mean, my dogs did live to be um, 15, 16 years old. They're all corgis. But that is not good enough. The health risk we put our dogs at feeding them kibble is just unbelievable. Not only does it dehydrate them, it fills them with chemicals and synthetics, and it puts them at a predisposition to cancer and chronic inflammation in their bodies. And it is just not good for them. And, and it's, it may be more expensive than some of the other options. So what can you do if you want to stop feeding your dog kibble? 
First of all, you have to go cold turkey. You can't feed kibble mixed with raw food because the kibble ferments in the stomach and that fermentation process will interact improperly with the raw food and create a very sick dog. And people will say, oh, I tried raw and my dog was really sick. Well, that's probably because of how you introduced it. So my sister, who is a vet, has had really good luck with very sick dogs that she's adopted and that she works with at Monkey's House, just going cold turkey, no more of whatever they were eating, just give them good raw food or what she refers to as gently cooked food. And gently cooked food is things that you cook in the slow cooker. So one option people have is to just throw a bunch of stuff, according to the recipes in my sister's book, Yin and Yang of Nutrition for Dogs, and just do that on a Sunday afternoon. And if you have a dog the size of mine, a little corgi, I can put that in the fridge, it'll last a couple of days, and then I can also freeze some in single serving sizes and thaw them out as I need them, and then I only have to deal with it once a week. And let's face it, throwing a bunch of stuff in a slow cooker is not too much work when you love a dog like we love our pets. So that is one option. My dog, because I'm a vegetarian and the smell of cooking meat, I just can't do it. So he gets dehydrated raw from Honest Kitchen, a company I love, um, and some of the other ones that come in prepared patties and things do have a lot of synthetic vitamins in it. So my sister is not a huge advocate for those, but they're still better than feeding your dog kibble. So I feed him dehydrated on his kitchen. He gets about a half a cup twice a day. And then in addition to that, I buy organic turkey burger and cook that and then add that to his food. And he loves it. And I've now got a source through a company my sister loves called Hair Today Gone Tomorrow, which is a company that sells you, um, for him, I need ground duck. He's a hot dog. He's very hot. Look at him now. He's panning. Uh, and it's 10 degrees below zero out. <laughs> I, he needs cold foods. Ducks are a cold food. Gooses are a cold food. So this Hair Today company will send me ground up duck burger and it's raw and I can gently cook it if I choose to. I do have a crock pot. I could cook it in the garage. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Just throwing it in down there where I don't have to smell it. Got a very nice garage. It's like a room down there. So I can do that. And I think that's what I'm gonna do to supplement his turkey because turkey's somewhat cold, but it's kind of a neutral food. So the other thing we need to look at to feed our dogs better in the new year is whether we have a hot or a cold dog. You can tell a lot by their coat. An orange dog or a red dog, like a Irish setter, golden retriever, some of the yellow spaniels, yellow labs, corgis, they're hot dogs. They need cold food. That means don't feed them chicken. Chicken is a hot food and chicken is also highly chemical laden. So unless you have a dog that really needs chicken, chicken is not your first choice. And if you look on the bags of many kibbles, it, the first ingredient will be some kind of chicken, even the expensive ones. And it may be organic, free-range chicken, but chicken is still cheap compared to a lot of other meats. And your dog actually might be better eating something, uh, something else, some other source of meat. Oh, and I had somebody write to me the other day saying that they have been feeding their dog venison. Venison is a great thing for your dog if you have somebody that goes out and shoots a deer for you and you don't mind cooking that for your dog, but make sure you freeze it for a, a, about seven days. That'll kill all the parasites and things that are living in a deer or a moose or an elk or a caribou, wherever you live. <laughs> if you're shooting something wild to feed your pet, just put it in the freezer for seven days and that will kill most of the parasites so that your dog will be safe. Uh, a poor little guy I read about on Facebook, he has uh, a fluke from salmon, which is kind of a worm, from a salmon that's living in one of his lymph nodes. He's a very sick boy. Thank God somebody found it. What a strange thing to diagnose. But again, if it's frozen for seven days, usually those things die. Um, and of course, salmon is very problematic uh, to feed dogs anyway. Farm-raised salmon is a hot food. Uh, wild salmon is a cold food. Um, and there's so many issues around contaminants in seafood anyway. But, so this poor guy, thank God somebody knows what's wrong with him and they can take care of it. But one resolution you should have for this new year, absolutely, is to stop feeding your dog kibble. Really explore some of your options because there are so many things you can do. And one of them is, and I have a client who has Pyrenees, okay? She has two Pyrenees, a poodle, and a bunch of Papillons. So those are big dogs. They weigh like 100 pounds. And then she's got these little fellas. And she 
for years just cooked for them. And they were all cold dogs, so it worked out because she was feeding them chicken. But, so that warms them up. But she was mixing it with brown rice and vegetables. She does a lot of juicing. She put some of the pulp from the juicing in there. And she, at that point, for many years, wasn't even mixing in, like Honest Kitchen makes a, a supplement kind of food that you mix in with your food um, that you home cook just to give your dog the vitamins and minerals and nutrients. She wasn't even doing that. And her dogs were very healthy. She had a Pyrenees lift to be over 15 years old, which is unheard of in some of these enormous breeds. So, you know, just cooking food for your dog can be really affordable. I am sure that cost her less than buying a $50 bag of kibble from the store. Um, and certainly uh, feeding a, a raw food is hard for a big dog. I know my niece um, gets a lot of her food from Hair Today and some of the other big companies, and she's got a 100-pound dog who's kind of slim, and she just can't um, feed her enough. So she's now supplementing it with some slow cooker food and some other options that are mixed in, which is fine. So I think that is a resolution that we should all try to make this year to stop feeding our dogs kibble because it is killing them. It was invented for convenience. And in fact, the story of how kibble was invented is kind of awful. You know, sailors coming back in the early part of the 1900s were throwing the leftover hardtack, which was moldy and I'm sure full of rat poop, out to the, the dogs at the docks to eat. And someone watching decided that was a great idea. And so why don't we feed leftover hardtack to our dogs? And so he developed a process to dehydrate the kibble and dry it out and dry it out and dry it out. And you can put pretty much anything in there. You need a lot of grain and high fructose corn syrup to make those kibbles stick together. And then the extrusion process is also another one that further takes the quality out of the food. So it's just, it's so uh, controversial among some people about feeding raw and you don't have to feed raw. You can feed gently cooked, but you can do such a better job taking care of your dog cooking for him than anything you can buy in the supermarket or even the nice pet store on the shelf. So that should be your New Year's resolution to look into and possibly stop feeding your dog kibble. And the other thing is to give your dog as much love as you can. We all love them so much. They are such a big part of our lives. And we just want to try to look out for their needs, try to listen to your dog, watch what they're telling you. Like Tristan, if I squeeze him and hug him, see how his expression changed? He's not happy. He doesn't like to be hugged. Most animals don't like to be hugged. They think they're going to be eaten. But if I just give him a little scratch up here where he likes it, look at the difference in his expression. So listen to your dog, see what he likes, see what he wants, see what he needs, pay attention to the messages because they're talking to us all day long to tell us what they need and want. And it's been so heartbreaking reading about um, corgis and other dogs on my Facebook that are sick with diarrhea, vomiting, uh, unknown malaise, not eating, etc., which can all probably be traced back to poor nutrition and of course, poor breeding and other things. People love their dogs so much, they're not purposely trying to hurt them. I have clients that bring their dogs to me with tremendous inflammation who are feeding really expensive kibble. And as soon as they stop that diet, the dog is tremendously better. And you know, it's just, it never ceases to amaze me and my clients, the difference it makes in your dog if you feed them high quality food. So that should be everybody's new year resolution. Love your dog and feed him better. Hi, Sue and Dory. Any advice for dogs paws in this cold? Oh, yes. One thing, well, Sue, I did talk about this a couple of times, but we can add this in because it is so darn cold. You can put petroleum jelly on their pads, you know, Vaseline, before you take them out, and that will help them um, stay hydrated and keep them warmer in the snow because the oil creates a barrier. You can also put little socks on them and booties. With corgi feet, it is so hard. Their legs are so short and the way they're structured. But I have several different pairs of little socks that fit my dog. Um, and then I just don't take them out for very long. And make sure that you um, wipe off their feet when they come in, especially if you put the petroleum jelly on them because it will leave little greasy prints around your house. And also it does help remove some of the salt and chemicals from the road that might get up on your dog's pads. So that's my advice, socks or petroleum jelly. And then also I trim out 
I should do it more. The fuzz between his pads. I'm really on the fence. If he's playing in the yard in the snow and he's not going on the road, then having a little bit of fuzz in his pads because he's not a type of dog that gets snowballs there can actually be helpful. But if I'm walking him on the road a lot, which right now I'm not um, because it's so darn cold, I let that fuzz grow out a little bit um, just to, um, I, no, I trim it out so that it won't hold the chemicals and stuff from the road. Because if he's licking his feet, I don't want him eating that stuff they put on the road. It totally wrecked my last truck. So I know it can wreck my corgi <laughs> if he eats it. <laughs> so there you go, petroleum jelly. And there are other things people talk about putting on their dog's feet. Uh, I can't remember, was it? It wasn't Desin tin, it was Desin X, something for diaper, diaper rash, but the petroleum jelly works just as well, is cleaner. Um, it doesn't have chemicals in it. It's petroleum, of course, which is a chemical, but it's, um, it doesn't leave little white sticky things all over your house. So just make sure you wipe it off when you bring them in and put socks on them. If people see what their Facebook friends in Canada are doing with their dogs, they look like they're going out to the Iditarod to take a 20 minute walk. They've got socks on, they've got turtlenecks, they've got um, blankets that are puffy and uh, some kind of wind barrier to them. They're not just like the little nylon knit ones or the wool knit ones that Tristan has. They're, they're really serious coats. So um, take an advice from our friends in Canada and really bundle your dog up. They, if you want to take them out, um, make sure that they're protected from the elements. So that's our advice for your New Year's resolutions for your pet. Love your dog, listen to your dog, and try to stop feeding kibble. It will make such a huge difference and give your dog such a longer life. So thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We will be off for a couple of days because I will be at my job as an educator for the next couple of days. But we will be back on Thursday. Not in front of the fireplace with the tipsy table. <laughs> it scared the corgi. That's terrible. <laughs>